What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. So, uh, talking about some ideas as far as how Konami could easily fix the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Or at least make the game a lot better than what it is right now. Um, I'm not saying that I'm a genius or anything like that or that I have all the answers. But these are just some ideas that I've been thinking about over, I guess, maybe the last week or so like that. So, I think that a lot of people have are a negative outlook on Yu-Gi-Oh! Or they're just kind of apathetic about the game right now because of the pendulum mechanic. Like, I don't really... Think think that a lot of players enjoy it it's just it's a really bad mechanic it's way too powerful and the real problem is it's so much more powerful than everything that came before than its predecessors you know what i mean like the the errors and the the mechanics that we got before and personally i'm just gonna say it i think that this is the worst era of Yu Gi Oh out of the five like i've played the game throughout all five of them and this is in my opinion the like this, this is the least fun that the game has been and i just don't like the pendulum mechanic as a whole now this really isn't a video about power creep or you know like doing things on the balance because those are even I guess like minor like I, I would consider those as like temporary fixes um and this is something that I believe could be a a long-term solution not well I guess long term as in you know three to four years I mean I, I consider that long term not long term as in forever or something like that but okay so my idea is they need to essentially go back to the basics. They need to get the game back on the rails. And what do I mean? What I mean by that is um, for the past four eras, not including Arc V, uh, they've essentially been doing the same thing. They've just been essentially making it better. Like they've been just upgrading the same exact um, process. Uh, the game kind of started with the mindset of summoning powerful monsters and having them battle against your opponent's powerful monsters. And, you know, you guys essentially using your boss monsters that try and you know what i mean like make your big push or to you know what i mean uh have it summon to the field and have its you know presence be felt like that be your ace monster and this was definitely shown with the original show you know the characters had their their boss cards like dark magician and red eyes and uh, summon skull well, some not really summon skull but blue eyes white dragon and whatnot and you know this is how essentially they made the game it was based around a lot of times the tribute summon mechanic you know what i mean like the tribute summon was fine it was a way for us to summon really powerful monsters you know at the cost of uh you know monsters that weren't so powerful you tribute those monsters get even more powerful monsters and then in the gx era they gave us the fusion summon i know technically we already had fusion summon in the um, original like Yu-Gi-Oh series, but they really focused on the fusion summon. They tried to make the fusion summon kind of like the key to victory during the GX era. And I mean, it was it's it's better than the tribute summon a lot of times because you didn't have to worry about drawing that specific card. You you could you could get to your fusion summons at any given time because they sit and they sat in your extra deck. As long as you had poly and the right materials, you could just bust it out and win. And again, this is how they focus the anime and stuff like that. Fast forward to the 5Ds era, and in my opinion, this is when they really just struck gold you know this is the way that or this is when they essentially kind of i don't want to say they perfected summoning the art of like summoning really powerful monsters but they got pretty damn close i think that happened during the um during the zeal era but essentially you didn't have to worry about you know drawing polymerization at the wrong time or not having the specific cards that you need you didn't have to worry about drawing your boss monsters at all because just like the uh fusions they lived in your extra deck but now you didn't have to use spells or anything like that you literally just put together a synchro and a not or excuse me a tuner and a non-tuner and bam out pops stardust dragon now the only deck that had this type of power at the time or previous to that was gladiator beast gladiator beast had the contact fusion which that shit was way ahead of its time because every other deck to fusion had to use spells and you know obviously you saw how powerful gladiator beasts were at the time i mean they won like worlds and nationals and like six shonen jumps in a world a row and you know largely well some of that had to do with cold wave but i mean that was like largely tier zero so you see that when the synchro summon came out the deck that kind of had power to or had the power to metaphorically synchro summon was like easily the best deck of the game so with uh, the synchro summon all you really had to do was incorporate you know tuners into your deck and bam you could just pop out the boss monsters one at a time and you know they made these powerful boss monsters like trishula and goyo guardian and even though there were obviously some crazy decks during the 5ds era and the era wasn't perfect <clears throat> 
I don't think that any of it really had to do with the Synchro Summon mechanic itself. I think the mechanic was fantastic. I think the mechanic is not to blame for any of the things like Teledad or whatever. You know, there were some times where maybe you could Synchro Summon too much in one turn, but that was all like, in my opinion, that was a product of things like Gateway of the Six or Rescue Cat or, you know, Malicious and Teleport all being at three at the same time. Like, that was products of like shit like that. It wasn't the Synchro Summon itself being unhealthy. And then, as I said earlier, I I think that they perfected the art of everybody being able to summon, you know, these really powerful boss monsters and do it efficiently when they release the XC summon in Zill. With the XC summon, we didn't even have to run tuners. The, the XC summon meant that every single person was invited to the party. I even said it when when I first kind of learned about the XC summon and I learned how to do it. Uh, this may have been in like 2012-ish. Um, I even made a video saying like, this is awesome because now even gadgets and gravekeepers, you know, decks like all the way from the original series and from like the, the, the GX era, even they can make, um, they can make, um, exceed summons. So I was like, this is kind of like the best of, uh, what we've gotten in, you know, they even had a little bit of a balancing act with the exceed materials, which in my opinion, made things, um, interesting and fair at the same time. Because some of the um, some of the synchros that ended up getting banned were things like Brio because, you know, it wasn't once per turn. With Xyz, even if they weren't once per turn, a lot of them operate off detaching a material. And it's really not like you're going to have unlimited material. So, you know, a lot of these synchros that got banned or limited, like uh, Great Choke, I mean, um, Legendary Six Samurai Sheehan and Brio, they weren't once per turn. You could kind of use them infinitely, you know what I mean? As long as you had, like, the resources with Xyz, at least you were kind of limited. But then... They got off the tracks with the Pendulum Summon. And I think the Pendulum Summon got off the tracks because they they changed the game up. You know what I mean? They got away from what was working. And I'm not trying to say that they shouldn't innovate or anything like that. They shouldn't try and make new ideas. But they really got away from what was working in the past four, you know, eras of Yu-Gi-Oh. Again, past four eras of Yu-Gi-Oh are about summoning really powerful boss monsters, your favorite boss monsters that can take over a duel. They tried to make it about one summon instead of one specific monster. They just tried in pre Previous eras, they made the summoning more efficient and more efficient and more efficient, and then they made the summon just the, the be all end all. And the thing is, they even marketed it like that. I mean, if you watch the anime, you know, the first duel on the entire show is what the Arc V era is about. It's about Yuya getting his ass completely handed to him, and then, you know, out of nowhere, he pendulum summons three monsters, including Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, and just fucking wrecks his opponent's face. And it's like, wow. You know, okay, that that really translates well in an anime, but it translates extremely poorly into a, in into actual gameplay, like into the actual card game itself, especially in the competitive circuit where, you know what I mean, you see it happen way too often where Sertella Knights versus Cleefort. Obviously, one deck is Pendulum, one deck isn't. And Sertella Knights are winning, and then Cleefort top deck scout, and bam, out comes the wave of, you know, five uh, Pendulum monsters, and you end up OTKing your opponent, or you end up completely winning in a way that is not fair, and it's not skillful at all, and it's just way... It, 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 it gives the deck a much higher ceiling than a non-Pendulum deck ever will, and you're seeing that come to even more fruition with... Uh, I don't know if you guys saw Yugi Nono's latest video where he's playing, like, uh, Draco pals and he does like five billion summons in one turn i mean and yes there were ways that konami could have obviously balanced the pendulum summon itself you know they could have made it so in my opinion uh two things they should have done was you should have either had normal or pendulum summon you shouldn't have allowed both in the same turn or uh, another thing that they could have done was they could have uh, made it so that when pendulum cards are destroyed they go to the graveyard and not the extra deck that means risk and reward would have been a lot more proportional but in theory the pendulum summon in my opinion still was a bad idea even if they would have done all of those things being able to summon five monsters at once that's generally the type of shit that gets you limited, isn't it? <laughs> like, isn't that, you know, return from a different dimension and dimension, like, you know, rekindling? Like, that's generally the things that get a card limited or banned. So why would you want every single deck to have access to that every single turn at the cost of no light points? It just seems in theory bad. And again, it's something that really works well on the show, but it doesn't work well in in an actual, like, practical competitive gameplay. So what I think Konami's solution is, is I know you guys are like, Cap, what's your point how are we fixing this you know i think what their solution should be to um 
essentially go back to what was working. You know what I mean? Go back to making it focused around one summon because as powerful as one monster is and one monster can take over a duel, it's much easier to deal with one powerful boss monster than your opponent literally just opening the floodgates and throwing eight monsters at you at once. Like I don't, I just, that concept in, that concept in itself is not fair. You know, summoning one monster as powerful as the monster could possibly be, just about everything can be stopped in some way or fashion. You know what I mean? Yes, you'll have monsters like Towers, which are going to become a problem eventually, but I think they need to make things more focused around one monster. And this is just a crazy idea that I just thought up, right? You guys are just gonna have to bear with me and laugh at my stupid idea, right? Let's just say for the next era of Yu-Gi-Oh!, Konami said, okay, we obviously went way too far with the pendulum mechanic. We're going to make it about, we're bringing it back. We're going to make it about summoning a boss monster and making it varied and, you know, more efficient and et cetera, et cetera, right? So here's my idea. This is just some crazy shit that I just thought of, right? So let's just say that the next era of Yu-Gi-Oh! has a red card. It's a red outline because they've never used the red border before. And they call that monster a hyper. Now, hyper acts pretty much, or at least you summon it very similar to a synchro, but it actually has the elements of a pendulum pendulum monster as well right so okay how do you summon a hyper uh, a hyper and for all intents and purposes just think of stardust dragon as our hyper stardust dragon is a red card i know it's white but let's just use your imagination people the card is white stats and level and all that is the same so you summon a hyper by using a um let's just say accelerant <laughs> i'm making this up and accelerant is basically a tuner they just call it in they call it an accelerant because you know they need something new so an accelerant plus a non-accelerant monster a non-accelerant monster is anything a non-accelerant monster can be a fucking synchro if you want it to be a non-accelerant monster is literally just any monster that is not uh, a, an accelerant which an accelerant is essentially a tuner so let's just say you had your accelerant which will be Krebons, and your non-accelerant which will be destiny hero malicious and then you essentially hypered them up into the hyper monster <laughs> the red stardust dragon but here's where things would be a little different because you're like yo cap isn't that the same exact thing as a synchro monster? Why would anybody want to play three years of that? Okay, but what if, let's just say, let's put a little balance in here. The monsters that you use to summon this hyper, they get, they get banished. So let's take out a little bit of those shenanigans. But when a hyper is destroyed, it doesn't go to the graveyard. It goes face up on the extra deck. And once per turn, instead of doing your pendulum summon or your normal summon, you can summon one hyper from your extra deck as long as it was properly summoned earlier like that would be pretty amazing in my opinion because then they actually could they could on the low they could actually push pendulums out of the game <laughs> they could kind of ignore them because without you having the need with, without you needing to have scales you'd still have the ability to summon things that are face up in your extra deck to summon your hypers and it would still give you kind of like it would still give you savage plays because like okay i'm in a top deck war i don't have any good cards i'm just going to summon my hyper instead of using my normal summon and at the same time again i don't have to use pendulums because you know i can summon hypers without having scales you know what i mean but it would still be kind of balanced because you wouldn't get your normal summon you wouldn't be able to pendulum summon that same turn you know what i mean and they wouldn't have to make the hyper cards extremely broken they could literally just make them the same power level as things like scarlight omega and you know like red eyes flare metal dragon i mean these these cards are all pretty damn amazing if these would have came out in like the 5ds and zill era we'd have been like we'd have lost our fucking mind they would have been pretty much all limit worthy or and this one might have been ban worthy but yeah so like that's just an idea that i thought about and it's like it would be varied it would be fun it would be exciting but at the same time it wouldn't be some shit where as soon as you did it you literally could just win the duel off of that one card like maybe you summon your hyper three times in a row and your opponent keeps killing it and you grind them down and win but it's a lot more balanced than something like the pendulum mechanic so i guess what i'm saying in this video is what Konami could easily do, and I really haven't heard anybody talk about it, is they could simply just go backwards. You know what I mean? Just take a step backwards from the pendulum summon mechanic. Go back to the basics and make things more about summoning one powerful monster. I guess, you know, like reverse power creep it a little bit because that seems to be the best solution because if they keep going forward and try and make something vastly more powerful than the pendulum mechanic, like that will be the shit that makes tons of people quit because the game will be so far out of control. So let me know what you guys think it again that was just some shit that i thought up thank you guys for watching as always